Good evening, y'all. I'm back in the kitchen with pizza on my mind today. I've looked at a lot of different recipes, and I've, um, I've got several that I'm going to try that takes longer than this one takes. But this is a recipe that I got off of Kitchen and Crafts uh, YouTube channel. He does lots of pizza recipes. So this is a sourdough recipe that I need to mix it now and then it has to uh, ferment for 8 to 12 hours and then you make it into the balls and it, it for your dough and then it ferments another 12 hours but it's all at room temperature. It's not in the refrigerator, ice bath, whatever you want to call it. So I've already pre-measured everything out. So I'm going to get y'all over here to the butcher block and um, get it in the bowl and then we'll go to the mixer and mix it just till it mixes a little bit. Okay, what we're going to do first is pour uh, 445 grams of room temperature water into the mixing bowl. And then we need to add uh, 50 grams of the sourdough starter. And it's active. I fed it this morning and it's good. I'm sure it smells really sour, but y'all know what the big C word did to me. It took my smeller away. So I can't smell, but I can imagine. Now once you get this in here, you just need to stir it to kind of dissolve your starter into the water a little bit. And then we'll do what's next. So that was 445 grams of water, room temperature, 50 grams of sourdough starter. And I've got it to where my water just looks milky. I've got it all stirred up pretty well here. I don't know if y'all can see in there, but I'll bring it over here hoping you can see. And to that, we're going to add 700 grams of double zero flour. And I'm going to tell y'all, if y'all make pizza dough and you need double zero flour, if you'll go to the Uni website, with X amount of money ordered, you get free shipping and you get the the bags of flour that's $9.99 on Amazon are $5.49, I think it is, on Uni. So check out the prices on the Uni website before you spend a fortune somewhere else. And we needed 25 grams of salt. Now we're going to go over to the Bosch mixer and just let this mix until it's just a little shaggy mess in there. And then it's got to rest for about 20 minutes. So I'm going to cart y'all all over to the mixer and we'll get this done. Okay, I've got it all set up on the mixer, and I'm just going to turn it on, and just till it mixes, just like a little shaggy, shaggy mess in there. Let me get this on where I won't have a dust bath. Okay, it's just all started kind of clearing the sides of the bowl and it's uh, come together some. So now I'm going to cover it back and I'm going to set my timer for 20 minutes because that helps the gluten to start to form and then we will carry on with the next step. Okay, it's been resting for 20 minutes. So now what I've got to do is knead it in the mixer for 10 minutes. We want it to just knead until it's a smooth, workable ball of dough. Y'all, I've let it knead in my Bosch mixer for 10 minutes, and so now, and it's kind of sticky, so now what I want to do is I want to form it into, well, yeah, it's kind of sticky, isn't it? Got me a mess going on here. Put me some flour on here. And a little flour around on the top. And I just want to take, and I'm just, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just rolling it and tucking it. Rolling and tucking. And what they say that does, it makes some friction on the top. And I'm tucking it with the sides of my hands down here, not poking my fingers in it. And I'm just going to do that till I get a nice, tight ball. Now 
and I'm going to put it in this oiled bowl. I'm just going to let it rest for 12 hours. And this should make four about 12 inch pizzas. So I got a little bit on my hands. So let me get some flour here. And did y'all know that if you do that, if you put flour on your hands, you can roll that off just like little pieces of whatever? I guess dough, huh? That's what it is. Usually if I'm needing something by hand and I need to do that, I get up I I get over there over the garbage can and get it off. Well, I keep getting some more on me from hither and thither. Okay, my dough ball is not as tight as his was, so I'm going to work it a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to put it in this bowl. Let me make sure I've got my oil all the way around. Just olive oil. And I'm going to lay it on its top, flip it over to its bottom, and I'm going to cover it real tight with a plastic wrap and let it rest for 12 hours, and we'll be back in 12 hours. Good morning, y'all. I told you I'd be back about 6 o'clock in the morning, so here I am. It's time to um, divide the dough and... Uh, Cut it in 300 gram little balls. It didn't double, but it definitely worked on itself a little bit. So I'm going to get it out on my board here. And I'm going to cut it hopefully in four fairly even pieces. They need to be around 300 grams each. I've got me some wax paper on here, zeroed out. Three eleven. 299.5. I think that's close enough. Let the scale off. Now what we're going to do is work these into a little ball and put each one of them in these containers. Put the lid on them and let them set out at room temperature for another 8 to 12 hours. That's all I have to do. I was right. So I'm going to shape each one of these into a ball by working it just like I did my big ball earlier yesterday. Get the top smooth and get it all tucked in. What you're doing is you're stretching the top around itself and tightening it up. See the difference in how how it looks. And I'm going to oil the top, oil the bottom, get each one of them done, and um, we'll let them rise another 8 to 12 hours. Okay, y'all, I've got them all four in their own little bowls with their lids on them. And um, in case you don't have little bowls, I got these at Walmart, and this is what he was using on Kitchen and Craft, and it's just right for one pizza. So I'm going to put them over here on the counter and let them set for 8 to 12 hours, and my Mac Man grandsons are coming this evening for pizza. So we will uh, roll them out, put the toppings on them. Now Richard said he thinks he wants pineapple and um Ham. I don't know what the rest of them are going to choose. We'll have to see. Y'all have a good day and I'll be back in about eight hours. Hey y'all, I'm back in the evening, Saturday evening, and I couldn't wait to tell y'all, so I put a little thing in the community tab that I was going to be doing pizza. 
So I got in here, little Richard said that he wanted spinach and alfredo, which is, Josh wanted that too. And um, they also like ham and pineapple. So I've got ham and pineapple ready, Italian sausage brown, got my alfredo, I cheated. I have basil and spinach here because I'm going to do a margarita. I've got fresh mozzarella and I have some shredded mozzarella. And I've got onion and bell pepper to go with this two kinds of meat to make just a, a regular supreme pizza. So, I think to get started. Josh is on his way. Richard got off a little early and he's already here. Okay, y'all. It's a little easier said than done. It's sticking to my counter. Because the pizza dough I usually use is not this fragile. So let me get my pizza peel up here and get me some semolina on it. Those boys aren't going to complain, but I wanted it really pretty, you know. And I don't have a little bump around the edge like I wanted. But I learned this is just the first one tonight. And we got four to make. So here's this one. And it has to slide back and forth. So I guess I didn't put enough stuff on here. Well, the first one they wanted was Alfredo with uh, three kinds of cheese. I've got Ramona, Parmesan, and fresh mozzarella, and then they just want spinach. So I'm going to get that one on first when, my, when it gets hot. Let's see how much longer. It takes 20 minutes. Let me see here. we got four or five minutes left, and then I'll go check it and see if it's hot enough. And then we'll get this one on, and then it'll be time to make some more bam, 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 because they get done in a little over a minute. Okay, they wanted Alfredo on it, and they want some uh, Parmesan and Ramana. Well, I guess they do. That's what little Richard said. And uh, Josh will just have to be party to the pizza. And this is the fresh mozzarella. Now, that tells me that the pizza oven is supposed to be hot now. And spinach leaves. I'm going to put just a little olive oil on the top. Now let me see if I can get it to get off on my pizza peel here. Okay, Richard went in to get the little thing to shoot and see how hot the stone is. And it's eight, almost 900 back there, so that's good enough. So let's see what I can do here. Oh, shoot, far. it messed up on me. We'll see what happens. Now I cut it down to low and, um, See what I can do with it. It kind of, it was, it's been on the pan too long, I think. But I'll leave it there, and maybe it'll heat. It's hot in there. Let me tell you, it's already a bubbling. I wish y'all could see inside, but I can't get it down that low right now.
It's just going to be a wonky jar pizza. I think it's going to taste good. Let me see here if I can get these legs down. Maybe y'all can see better. I don't know. Can you see in there now? Boy, there's an art to learning to turn these things. I can tell you that for sure. There's a pizza stone that I saw a guy on Kitchen and Craft using um, that's a special kind of clay, and I'm going to save my pennies and order me one of them. It's thicker than this one. It retains the heat better, and when you first put your pizza in, it crisps the bottom. So one of these days, I'll have one of those. I thought, well, yeah, I'll get me one of them. I went and looked at the price, and the shipping's what's killer. But I want one. Uh-oh, that got a little bit brown, don't you think? It's smoking a snitch. But those hungry boys won't care. Okay, now I need to turn it back up so my stone will retain its heat. Let's see, there's the pizza. I'm going to run this one in the house and get ready to make the next one. Okay, pizza number two is going in, but it don't look too much better than pizza number one. So I think what happened, I waited till the boys got off work, and uh, my sourdough should have only done for 8 to 12 hours, and it was like 14 hours. So I think that is my problem. But they're in there eating the first one and said it tastes good. It might not look pretty, but it tastes pretty. So that's good. This one is ham and pineapple. So we'll see. I'll bring y'all back in just a minute. Y'all, this is going to be so much fun when I learn how to do it right. I should have practiced before I made a video of it, but everybody has to learn from their first time, so I have that little turner arounder that would be easier than this big thing, probably, but this little thing. But this one is wonky, Joe. It's not perfectly round. Let's see the bottom. The bottom looks pretty good. Pizza number two. I'm going to take it in and cut it, and I'll be back with another one. Here's the third one. It's stuck right there. I made a mess, but I'm going to bring it in, and I got one more to make. Okay, y'all, my first pizza uh, shop is closed. We had fun, and, I, and there is a knack to getting that pizza off and on of that uh, peel. And what happened, I made sourdough crust, and it sat too long on the second 12 hours. And so it was real soft and it stuck my last two pizzas and it was kind of a mess, but they tasted yummy. The first one looked pretty good. I was proud of it, but uh, the next ones didn't do as well. So it's going to take some practice for me to get it like I want it because I like for everything to be right. But I'm glad they tasted good and the kids liked them and Troy liked them and I did too. So I love my uni. 16 inch uni coda pizza oven. I'm going to master that thing and make everything work good and uh, I'll bring y'all along for the ride. We'll make some more pizza but we'll probably make it when it's just me here and I don't feel as uh, 
you know, when you're trying to get it ready for people to eat and you know that one's going to get cold before the next one gets ready, maybe, you, you're a little bit um, on edge or whatever the word I'm looking for. So one of these days, I'm just going to make me some crust and get out there and make a pizza when I'm just here by myself. can take my time and not feel any pressure. That's what I'm saying, pressure. And then when I get the hang of it real good, it don't matter how many I have to make one behind the other. But I did enjoy it. I love it. The boys enjoyed the pizza. And it's going to be, like I said, doesn't matter how much you watch something. It's kind of like April making that butter roll that time. You can watch somebody else do it and it looks so easy. But do you start doing it, there's a learning curve. So I've got to learn how to make it wiggle on that peel and get off in the oven and get it back out and I'm going to practice and practice makes perfect. I hope y'all found something to put joy in your day. You can find something every day to put some joy in your life. You can choose joy or you can choose to be in the mully grubs. Now I'm going to choose joy. It makes me feel better. Even if my pizza wasn't perfect, hey we had pizza to eat. I'm thankful. Y'all remember to get your little stuff together for your uh, holiday season that's coming up have all your groceries ahead of time while well, maybe you can still afford them because it's sure going up and you can have a good uh, time around your table making memories the good lord bless and keep y'all and i'll be back here in a day or two with something that i know how to cook <music>